Okay, so for our area, um, basically they don't grow much bigger than a half inch. So I'm tying on you typically a 16 down to a 20, maybe a 22 are pretty common. Um, in salt water, of course, you go half inch and bigger because they're going to be bigger in the salt water. And you can adjust your colors accordingly. In the streams around the driftless area, you can find them in tan, kind of an off olive color, dark brown, sometimes almost black. So you've got a whole range of colors you can go with there. Tonight, I'm going to tie it on a 14. It's a Daiichi 1130. Um, it's just a, a very typical scud hook and I've got plenty of them. One of my favorite scud hooks is the Umqua, the uh, Competition C300. They're just a beautiful wide gap hook, but this is the last one I have, so I'm saving that. Um, but Gamakatsu, uh, the C12 works great. The TMCO 2457, they're all common classic scud hooks. Uh, let's see, we are going to be using wire, and I'm gonna actually tie, tie two of them. The first one I'm going to use an ostrich pearl. So this one uh, you can tie again. This is in the camera with the lighting. It looks funny. This is an olive. You can tie them in white, yellow, tan, uh, whatever fits your waters. When I'm buying an ostrich pearl for scuds instead of streamers, I mean this this guy. That's just beautiful streamer right there. But on the barbs, you're actually interested in the little barbules on the side, sticking off the sides of the barbs, you want enough length to make good legs. So that's one thing to look for, and this, this one I, I like. So I'm gonna be using the olive. Um, let's see, I'm going to switch over to my camera. So this is one I had tied up. You can do anything you want with these. So this was just some, uh, olive green flash dubbing. And you can see I put a little tail on back. You don't have to. It, it's very similar to the pink squirrel that Dan tied last time. So I guess to get started, everybody can see that okay, I hope. Does anybody have any questions about scuds? Yeah, excellent. Okay, so thread, you can use kind of any thread you want. You know what? I need my tying tools, my bifocals. Um, any color works here. I use a neutral color because the thread really gets buried. If you want to use a black to give a, a nice high contrast head or a hot spot with a pink or an orange, that works great. Nobody's going to stop you. The fish are going to love it. So I'm using a wire. This is just a gold wire. Don't waste your thin, fine stuff. Uh, this is a brassy, I believe. Might even be a large. Um, the extra weight helps it get down. I'm going to tie it on the side because that'll give me a little extra width. And the scud is kind of a fat bodied critter. So just tie it from the front all the way back, give you a nice platform to work on. And I'm going well down the bend, get some nice curvature in it. All right. And then the next thing is to just tie on one strand of ostrich pearl. Clean this guy up just a tad bit. Then I'm gonna bring my thread forward. And one thing I like to do occasionally when I'm doing a lot of wrapping is I'm just gonna put a little half hitch on here just to keep the thread safe. So I know I'm going a little quick, and like I said, I'm gonna tie this twice. So does anybody have any questions at this point, Dan? Okay. No, no cool. questions yet, Dan. Fantastic. Okay, so now we're gonna start building the body. And we take the ostrich hurl, and we're just gonna palmer it up. You don't have to do touching wraps, but you want them fairly close because that's going to be your, your leg segments sticking down. And you just cover the entire hook shank with ostrich hurl. There's one question, Denton. 
Yeah. Are you wrapping towards you or away from you? I'm wrapping uh, under the hook over towards me, away under. And you know, it doesn't matter. It's whatever you're comfortable with because in a minute, I'll show you. I mean, it's, it's an interesting little tie. It's, it's a little different, but you'll see why. So there is my ostrich on there. Pretty straightforward, right? We've all done that. Now you can take your wire and you're just going to do it like you would do wire through any cackle that you've uh, wrapped on a hook. You can wiggle it, and I'm I'm actually doing it the same way. You can you can run backwards with it to try to trap it, but you're going to learn that you really don't need to trap much with this fly. It is an incredibly durable fly. It is not going to fall apart because the wire doesn't catch all this pearl down properly. And then when you get up to the front, you just give it a few ties, and again, you don't really have to worry about tying it off hard. Now, I will get really mad if I see anybody pulling out their tying scissors to cut that wire. You can helicopter it, you can plier it, I don't care, just don't use your good scissors. That was directed towards my son, by the way. Kyle, <laughs> pay attention. Okay, so <clears throat> there is a hot mess. This <clears throat> Now comes the technique that turns it into a scud. Um, in the era of COVID, I'm not sure how correct this technique is, but typically you would lick your fingers. You could probably be more sanitary if you dipped it into the scotch you're drinking, but you just wet your fingers and you just slide it down over the hook. And all those little fibers will lay straight down. So there's a question, Denton. Sure. Does this fly have a tail? It can, it does not have to. Um, the scud tail is very, very tiny, and it doesn't really protrude or move much different than the legs. They are back there, and you can see I've got a few little tiny hairs way at the back. There's my bod from here. I mean, they'll stick out the back a little bit. Um, the next one I'm going to tie, I was going to put a little uh, tail on back there. That's the gills. Uh, you, typically, I would use a little tiny, well here, on the next one, this is a piece of marabou, and I was just gonna take a few little tiny tips off the back of the marabou, maybe three, four of those, and put tiny little tails on the very back end. It doesn't take much, it doesn't detract from the fly, but if you wanna make it look even prettier, that's great. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna get to the UV. So I'm using, Good old Loon, where's my, there, Loon Thick. Um, you can use thin, but you gotta be real careful with the thin stuff. When you put it on the top of the fly, it will leach into the body of the fly and down into the legs and gum the whole thing up. If you're gonna use thin UV epoxy or even non-UV epoxy, rotate your fly and put it on the bottom with maybe your bodkin, a very thin layer, and you build it up over time on the bottom. With the thick stuff, you don't have to do that. And if you guys use a lot of UV, I would highly recommend you get these replaceable tips. Uh, Whitetail's got them. And they're easy to clean, and they fit, they're universal, so they fit almost every UV I've ever had. And they're, they're just so much easier than the tiny little plastic nozzles. So with the UV, you just come in from the top, get it started. Don't want to run too much out of here at once. So the thick stuff will cling on top nicely. And you don't want to put too much up there. A little bit fell off there. But uh, with your bodkin, you can kind of even it out a little. And what's nice about the UV, of course, is you can clean it off before you set it and not ruin all your tools. And then once you've got your UV epoxy on, hit it with your light. Uh, 
Okay, so that is our first layer of UV. Now, here's where you can do fancy stuff. Um, you could get a purple or a pink highlighter. You can get a thread, yarn, whatever. Good old Sally Hansen's hard as nails. And uh, I don't think they have a color on here. Oh, this is Mighty Mango. Works great. Fish love the mango. <laughs> so the trick with the Sally Hansen's is when you pull this, this applicator out, it is covered in tons of nail polish. Wipe it all off. You're going to have way too much on there. And then when you've got just a little bit, then you can put a little dab on top and it won't go everywhere. But it's actually probably even more than I needed on that one. And I'll show you a different technique for this if you don't want to steal your wife's nail polish or your own, I don't care. Um, but with a tiny little layer on there, you can go back to your UV and don't drag your tip through there, but just put another layer over it. That's looking pretty good. Find my light. Now, I've actually only done my quarter hitch on the front. I could do a, I, I could whip finish it off. You don't really need to because that, that thread is trapped under there by a huge gob of epoxy. But that is the entire fly right there. So any questions with that guy? You can see the pink on the, on the top. It's embedded inside, so it's not going to wear off. You're not going to unravel your uh, your ostrich or your wire. And uh, it's a fairly bulletproof fly. There's a question, Denton. Absolutely. How do you fish this fly? <laughs> that is a very good question. Um, poorly? No, just kidding. I don't think they meant you. <laughs> yes, personally. I know. So when you're out on a, a small stream and around here I'm going to focus on the driftless but it would apply to the, the Rockies or the Cascades the Sierra Nevadas scuds eat decaying plant matter they love leaves and vegetation that's what they that's their life so you're going to want to find areas that have vegetation in the driftless those streams I know a lot of you guys are familiar with these beautiful streams with crushed gravel beds that are full of caddis because the caddis love the rocks but the scuds aren't necessarily going to be there. And if they're there, they're going to be down under the rocks, digging for any dead plant matter that's trapped in the rocks. They're going to be where the vegetation is. So if you see patches of, of water plants, they're going to be at the base of those. So if you throw it into channels around the beds of the plants, that's where the scuds are going to be coming out. They swim, so they're going to be coming out in that area, and the trout will know that. If it's a long stretch with no real vegetation in the stream bed, work the banks with it because the scuds will be at the banks. If there's a slow pool, you'll know where the dead logs are and where the leaves collect. Scuds will be in there by the thousands. Run one over the top of that because the, the trout will look for them to leave that and move on to other areas. So focus on the vegetation with these guys. Is that okay? Yep, cool. All right, so. <clears throat> The other version, now this is because, you know, in our current situation, it's not easy to get to the fly shops. So let's do one if we didn't have the same set of materials. I'm going to assume you all have the wire and a hook. But other than that, I'm not going to make any assumptions. So again, we just start it the same way. And we mentioned uh, the tail. I thought I had my little marabou show and tell piece out here. Oh, there it is. So a tail is only going to be a few little pieces and very short. A, maybe a hook gap at most.
Yeah, there's a, a little tiny tail back there hanging off. A little long, I might trim it down. Um, but again, we're gonna use the same wire. Just put it up here on the side. It'll come around and stay on one side. That'd be nice, there we are. And then I'm gonna take my thread all the way to the back. And now I don't have ostrich hurl because I didn't go to the fly shop. So I'm gonna use dubbing because pretty much everybody has some dubbing, right? So here I've just, the two I found, they're, uh, Wobsy, this one's a nymph tan. And this one that looks almost identical is a caddis ginger. Little darker. I don't know. But what you're looking for is you don't want it too fine. You want it a little stringy, little kind of kind of like for the pink squirrel, but not quite as coarse. So pull off a pinch. I'll get back to my vise. And you don't want to make your noodle very tight. You want it to be a little open because you're going to be brushing a lot of this out. So just start from the back and you're not really building up a profile either because that profile is coming from the UV. And again, I don't know what it is, but a lot of my flies start off looking like a hot mess before they, uh, look good, but hopefully they all end up looking good enough. So there is a little bit of dubbing and now you just wrap your wire. Give it that segmented look. No trout's going to count the number of segments, but there should be 13. Tie it off. Get rid of your wire. And you know, we can actually finish the thread off right now because this fly is done except for our UV. And I've got a pink spot trick for this one as well. Okay, back to my oh, can't put the UV on yet. I gotta make legs. So this does look like the pink squirrel right now, but we want it to look more like a scud. So this is just a bristle brush. This one's brass for cleaning up metal. And if you just come through there on both sides, you can see how the legs are coming down. Now this one's looking a little ratty. I might've tied this one a little too tight. because The legs aren't coming out as easy. So I probably could have done this one a little looser, but they're, they're hanging there. Then you come in with your epoxy. Probably getting a little low here, but. Get that again with the light. Okay, now, if we don't have Sally Hansen's, we probably have some yarn or thread or something. And I just happen to have a spool of pink thread or a spool of, of orange thread, doesn't matter which one. And you don't have to do anything fancy with it. This, the pink and the orange spot on top isn't just a hot spot because as scuds get older, their shells do turn orangish. And there is a parasite that scuds get that burrows underneath the shell and lives under the back that turns them pinkish as well. So it is a natural phenomenon, but you can just take this and wrap a few wraps around there and you could even whip finish it to hold it in place. Doesn't have to be big. And then just cut your tag and your main thing. So there's your pink spot right there. Does that show up pink then, for you? Hmm? Question for you. Yeah. Have you ever fished this fly without the UV epoxy? 
You know, not this, because the whole thing is held together with the UV and it gives it the back shape. Um, I've never done it with a different epoxy, but I've never done it without any epoxy, I guess. Um, obviously, the pink squirrel is very much a scud replica. It's a, you know, same color, similar size. It's got the pink spot. It's trying to trying to be a similar uh, type of fly. And I fish pink squirrels. You know, I fish, uh, oh, what are the big brush hogs? That's pink squirrel without the pink and a lot of big uh, dubbing hanging off of it. Um, those are all scud type patterns. They're leggy, they're brown, they're nymphs. So, you know, those are kind of scuds without the epoxy, but this epoxy is just to give it a, a nice curved body shape. It ties it all together strong so it'll last forever. And after I put that thread on, I'm going to put just a little bit more epoxy over the back. And one more body question, Denton. Absolutely. You ever tie them with lead weight added? I have. Um, it's that's useful in really fast water that's deeper than you're going to get down it with a normal unweighted one. Um, most of the water that's knee deep, you don't need it because it's not going to be moving fast enough that it's going to push the scud across the surface. Um, it'll it'll get down to the bottom pretty well in three feet of water in a in a good stiff current. But you know, I've been on rivers that were blown out that I'm like, wow, I wish it was heavier. So before I forget, I'm going to hit this with a little. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but when this UV light hits that thread, it on my end, it is just exploding bright pink. And so when it's out in the sunlight, the ultraviolet light from the sun is going to really light that little spot up, more so than the Sally Hansen's. There you go. That's two quick and simple scuds.